Greetings, comrades, or should I say, Privyet Tovarishi, which is probably the last time I'm going to mangle Russian in this video, I promise you. Uh, welcome to chapter 4.5 of the Flying Tutorial Series. The point five is because the T-Build, or the Timushinko build, which hopefully I didn't mangle that too much, came out probably about a month after I had completely finished with the Flying Tutorial Series. And they changed some things, and it was all good, mostly good pretty much all good. So for example, in chapter two, we talked about the ribbons and badges. Well, in the T build, they changed the use for one of the badges. So I wanted to update that. They also uh, included a new plane. So in chapter three, whenever we did the, the planes and their uses, uh, we didn't cover the Yak, and the Yak-9 is a brand new plane, it's pretty badass, I wanted to cover that. Had a lot of people requesting just sort of like an updated uh, chapter covering just the Yak, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the pros and cons, we're going to look at how to bomb, when to bomb, we're going to look at ammo conservation, because that is a big deal with the Yak, but all wrapped in one nice little package, roughly around 10 minutes, just like all the other chapters. So I hope you enjoy, find it informative, here we go. <laughs> So this is Cheap Bastard. He's one of my Soviet pilots. He is academy trained just because day one I wanted to get in the air, so I bought a level zero uh, pilot. You can see how fast he's he's leveled up. The ribbons themselves haven't changed all that much. It's still level four for bronze, level eight for silver, and level 12 for gold. You can see that I'm still trying to get uh, Cheap Bastard up to level 12. What changed was the, the badges themselves. The old badge used to give you extra bombs for bombs away. The new badge gives you faster resupply. So 15 faster for bronze, 30 faster for silver, 45% faster for gold. And in my mind, this is a positive thing. I like the way they did this. Because the old way of giving you extra bombs, you know, that was that was okay. That was actually pretty good. But this not only gives you a faster reload on bombs, but it also gives you a faster reload on cannons. So things like the 109, which was a pretty fast uh, reload anyway, is now super fast, 45% faster. Same with the P38. P38 used to have a really long one, but now with gold bombs away, it reloads faster. It gets you back in the air faster with cannons and with bombs. So now you can juggle the reload a little bit better. With the Yak, you know, the Yak, we're going to talk about the pros and cons in a second, but I'll touch on one. Uh, the Yak only has 170 machine gun uh, bullets. That, that's, that's tiny compared to the 109 and the P38, which has thousands. So in the Yak's case, a faster reload is absolutely necessary. You want to level this up and get bombs away gold as quickly as possible. And like I told er earlier in the old video, given the choice between bombs away and flag jacket, in this case, absolutely bombs away, just because of the fact you need that faster reload. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the Yak itself. So here we're looking at the Yak, sexy little beast that it is. Uh, you'll notice quickly that the, the cannon sticking out of the propeller at the very front, see that little black dot? That's your one cannon. The Yak has one cannon and one machine gun. So compare that with like the P-38, which has a flying arsenal of cannons and machine guns. And even the 109 has multiple cannons along with the machine guns. The Yak only has one of each. Uh, that's okay though, because it does make up for that con with a pro, the placement. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, and other things that you have to think about though uh, with the Yak is the, the paint scheme. That is very, very hard to see from above. So we're going to touch on the stealth settings, but you know, I talk later about the noise that this Yak makes. The other thing you have to keep in mind is the paint scheme. It's very difficult for enemies to see you if you're flying low. Most of the time I'll say fly high, but with the Yak, flying low is actually a pretty good idea. So in terms of the cannon ammo, uh, it gives you the same choices as the other planes. So it has HE for high explosive, and you have APCR uh, for armor piercing composite rigid. Uh, we talk a little bit more about the uses of these in chapter 5 and 6. I'm not going to go uh, touch too much on them right now. I'd much rather just roll right into the pros and cons of the Yak, and then you can catch up on that on the later videos. So let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons. So pros and cons of the Yak. Uh, first off, right out the gate you get four bombs. It's a huge pro, right? I mean, four bombs. Uh, the 109 only has one, the P-38 has two. You get four in the Yak. Now the con for that is that it's a smaller bomb. So if the P-38 and 109 have 250 pound bombs, Yak's probably got about 125. It's a much smaller blast radius, much less lethality at range, which means you have to put the bombs exactly where you want. Of course, even if you miss, you have four of them, so you can swing back around and drop another one. That's a huge, that's a huge pro, even with the smaller bombs. 
Uh, the second pro is sniper cannons. Much like the P38, uh, the cannon is right in the center. That makes dogfighting a lot easier for you. And also ground strafing, just because you can put the rounds right where you want them, and you don't have to worry about the offset cannons like on the 109. Uh, third is AP machine gun ammo. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier that you only get 170 rounds for machine guns, but this is AP rounds. So unlike the P38 or the 109, whenever you shoot like a recon vehicle or a tank, you'll get that armor too thick. Yeah, the AP machine gun ammo can actually penetrate quite a bit of armor. I haven't tested it on a heavy tank yet or a medium tank just because I can't find a war match with uh, yaks and those at the same time. Uh, but it's wonderful having that armor penetration. Now, it does have the con where, you know, you only have 170 rounds of it, so you have to be careful with it, but the AP is nice. And the final pro is the ninja-like stealth settings. The Yak is quiet. I mean, super quiet. Half the time, you will never even hear the thing until it's already shooting at you, which in a dogfight is huge because you use sound a lot, or you should be using sound a lot. We'll talk about more of that in uh, chapter five and six. But I'm gonna give you a comparison, just show you how loud the 109, the P38, and the Yak is, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, for the cons, we've already talked about the smaller bombs. The second con a lot of people don't think about is this plane is made of tissue paper. So if you have ever flown a 109 and you've gotten wing bladed or clipped by a P38 and the P38 keeps on flying away and your 109 explodes, uh, you know, you, you know that the P38 is a more robust plane than the 109. Yeah, the Yak is worse than all of them. So if you, you, you can get rammed by a 109 and if it's not like a head on ram, if the 109 just clips you with a wing, you're going to blow up and the 109 is going to be perfectly fine. It's happened to me more times than I like to admit. So just stay away from all ramming it while you're flying the Yak. Uh, you're going to see in the, the dog fighting that I show here, I just barely nudge a 109 and it took four bars of health off of my plane. And I mean, I didn't even see me nudge him. I, I must have hit him because it took four bars off, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, and then the final con is just that the machine gun ammo has much less. We talked about that before. So let's go ahead and roll into some actual footage where I can show you some flying. First off, before we do that, I'm going to give you three comparisons of planes and you'll see just how quiet the Yak is in comparison to the other two. And you want to use that in a dogfight. So let's do that right now. So here's the 109. You hear how loud that is, how high pitched it is? Just keep that in mind. All the volume has been leveled. So all three of them are the same level of levels. Here's the P-38. Again, high pitched, kind of loud. You can hear 109 in the background. Now listen to the gap. Do you guys see the difference here? I mean, like half the time, they'll never even know you're behind them. And that front cannon, I just grabbed a couple of clips. That front cannon, wonderful little sniper cannon. So just short little bursts. We'll talk about that more in the HE uh, dogfighting video. But you can sneak up on somebody, put rounds into their cockpit. They'll never even know you're there half the time with the guy. Now, this is what I was talking about. I just barely nudged him, and look, four bars health gone. So you have to be incredibly careful with the guy. Let's go ahead and go talk about bombing a little bit here. Boom, he blew up. All right, I chose this clip because it shows a couple of things. It shows not only how to bomb, but also what happens whenever you run out of ammo, because you get to see me run out of ammo here, which is not a good thing. So I'm coming in here. I see this Jeep. You guys see the Jeep? He's right there. Now, the Yak is a little crazy because I expected whenever I first started flying it to be near the release point of the 109, like the, the nose just covering the target because the bombs are in the back. Actually, it's closer to the P-38. It's whenever the nose is almost to the target. You want to re release just a little bit early here. In this case, not only do I have to release a little early, but I also have to release in front of him. So my target is actually going to be right about here because he's moving. But that looks like a pretty full Jeep. So what I'm trying to do is put the bomb right on him because smaller bombs, less damage. I'm not going to kill everybody unless I do that. Right, right there. Okay, so they, we ended up getting everybody on that Jeep. I loop back around. I cut my engines because I want to have some time to look around and see what else I can bomb. All of a sudden, I see that guy spawn in his Jeep right there. I released the bomb and I was able to put it in that pocket. Now, it looked like I released a little bit late there, but that was only because I pulled up at the last minute. So what you were seeing was not only me releasing, but also pulling up. That's why it looked like it was a little bit later on, but I actually released whenever the first part of that nose had just passed the target. And like I said, it's closer to the P-38 than it is the 109. Now pay attention to my ammo here. I've got six HE, 64 rounds of AP, and uh, a whole one bomb left. Make that no HE, because I just wasted six rounds on one guy. 
horrible. Don't do that. Yeah, it's like three rounds max. That's all you need. So I'm looking around here. Oh, look, there's the Jeep. He stopped to pick up somebody. I'm trying to lob the bomb. So I wanted to release the bomb and have it fly out. Instead, he hauled ass before I could do that. So I only killed one guy. And the rest of them were all in the Jeep. It was probably that one guy he left behind whenever he saw me coming in and hauled ass. So smart Jeep driver. But I only got one kill from that bomb instead of the three or four that I could have. And that's because smaller blast radius, you need to put them right on target. I still have issues with this, especially with moving targets like Jeeps and uh, motorcycles. So I'm trying to light up this guy here and shoot him out of his Jeep without uh, with my AP. I fail at that. I've got six left. I'm going to go ahead and waste those right now. I am doing damage to the Jeep, but Kubo wagons, man. Strong stuff. Actually, those that's just the normal Jeep. So I loop back around. Now I am completely out of ammo. I am a flying hunk of metal with no offensive capability, except the ability to scrape. And scraping is just whenever you, you fly low and you just scrape the infantry right off the ground. The yak, I've started doing that on the yak. I've actually got a scrape counter on my stream just because of the fact that once you run out of ammo, that's all you got. So th that's not something you want to happen. Like right now I'm trying to scrape this guy. I was trying to clip him with the wing and I didn't go low enough. Almost missed it, almost hit the building. But then we reloaded, so we're good to go. The, the moral of the story is do not run out of ammo if you can help it. And that's, that was just poor man, ammo management on my part. I should have uh, released the bombs a little bit early so that way I, I can get the reload starting. So what you want to happen is as soon as you uh, get to like 90% on reload, you want to have enough HE where you can just blast it all like 10 HE left. Uh, use it all and then get the reload again and you can just keep reloading like that you just keep that going keep that rotation going so I'm gonna probably show y'all one more bomb here on this little run like here's this Jeep right here and now so I released it a little bit in front of him able, was able to get him but look at that Jeep is still alive or the Jeep itself is still alive and that's because of those smaller bombs I was able to kill the guy but I wasn't able to kill the Jeep smaller bombs guys you got to be on target so I hope this helped. Uh, just remember that for the yak, you want to have the bomb released just before the nose touches. Remember the 109, it's like just when the nose touches, covering slightly, and the P38 is whenever it touches the cannon or it's right in between the two cannons. For the yak, it's a little bit ahead. You don't have that hard line to go off of, but it's just a little bit ahead. Just So if you train yourself on the 109, do it about half a second before you would on the 109 with the yak and you'll be putting the, the bombs on target. I do still have a little bit of problems lobbing the bombs just because I think the bombs fall straight down instead of underneath the undercarriage so you can't sling the bombs like you can with the 109 and the P38. Uh, you know like the 109 I, I usually say I can put a 109 bomb through a door. I can't do that yet with this one and I don't know if it's even possible. Uh, like you know I'm sure it is but doing it consistently like that I still have problems with that. So just try your best with it, get used to it as much as you can, and sooner or later you'll be putting them exactly where you want them. Try not to carpet bomb. I see people going, you know, just space bar, space bar, space bar, so it's boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it looks really cool, but three of those bombs were wasted even if you do get a kill. So what you want is to use one bomb for multiple targets, preferably, um, or if, if nothing else, then just, you know, that one tank or one Jeep. Try not to carpet bomb. You want to be able to put the bomb in the AA sandbag, that kind of thing. Not carpet bomb the whole area. It's just a waste, waste of bombs. So guys, I hope this helped you out. I'm sorry that it took me so long in order to get a Yak review up, but uh, getting usable footage is actually a pretty big pain in the ass. It usually takes me a day or two in order to get something that doesn't have fog in it or something like that, uh, that I can actually use for a review. And every day I'm doing this is a day I'm not streaming, and I really like streaming. I really like streaming. Heroes and Journals is a fun game to stream. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, found me yet on Twitch, definitely check me out there. I'm streaming pretty much every day. Uh, the schedule flexes based on work, but most days I'm on there uh, in the afternoons. So I hope you found this of use. I'm going to go ahead and shut up now and let you roll right into the next video. And uh, hopefully you find the whole video tutorial series entertaining and, you know, somewhat informative. So I'll see you later. Take care. Oh, you like video games? I like video games too. In fact, I like making videos of video games. So if you like what you saw here and you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also catch me on Facebook, Twitter, or OldManSmithersGaming.com, all of which will let you know whenever I'm online and streaming. Also, make sure you check out some of the videos that we have here. We have other tutorials. We have some Let's Plays. It's just all about having fun. So appreciate y'all joining me. Hope to see you around.